Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin from GreyFlorals.com and today I have another Pick 5 video. So in this video series I pick 5 items from my stash and use them on a layout. So this first one is this gold Heidi Swap modeling paste or texture paste as you'd call it. And um, it's this beautiful like rustic gold color. I wouldn't say it like is a bright or yellow gold but I do like the shade of gold it is. Number 2 is this Fiber Castell Gelato set. I don't know how to pronounce the um, brand, but it's this set of green gelatos. It comes with a paintbrush and a stamp. I picked these up at Clearance at Joann's. So if you want to look at um, some more mixed media items, check out there. They're clearancing out a lot of items. Third is this Echo Park Adventure Stencil. I love this stencil. I try to use it on all of my adventure layouts. Number four is this Kathy Davis Journey Paper Pad, also from Joann's, but about two years ago. So they don't carry this anymore, but... It is a really great paper pad. Number five, and last but not least, this is Amy Tangerine Thicker Stat in the Grace. It's called Grace. So this is from one of her older collections, and I don't have a lot left, but I do use a little bit of it. So now let's get started. For my mixed media aspect here, the gelatos, I'm going to put them here on my craft mat. I'm testing out the colors first to see which colors I want to use, and I'm using the paintbrush that came with them. And basically what I'm going to do is create like a grass sort of pattern. And the way gelatos work is, well I'm not 100% sure because I'm not some sort of artist, but um, they basically become watercolors, but there's also pieces with in there that don't uh, break down in the waters easily. So they create darker streaks, which I really liked for this. Um, if you kept working with them, they would break down. You can get more of a solid color. But um, I'm just going to keep doing this all the way across my paper. So I'm going to leave some white at the top there which you'll see in a second because it'll be completely dry. So I have a gradient sort of of greens back here. So I just keep doing this and then once that's all done and dry I'm going to be sure to make sure I fill in the whole entire bottom because I thought I was going to do white on top and on the bottom but I did just like it on the top. Now I'm trying to see where I'm going to keep my photo and here you can see me adding some darker streaks using a chunk of that gelato. And I'm going to put my photo on the, towards the left hand side and I know I want to use this thicker that says fun. But now I've decided that I'm going to make this cool strip like weave pattern behind my photo after I play with this other idea first. So I thought I might do the strip across but that's the thought, oh well I always do that. I always do my 6x6 paper pads all the way across. So I decided I might do some of these stickers from, uh, I believe it's... Echo Park maybe, but I decided not to do that. So I'm going to cut a few strips of these, this blue paper and then I'll go back and add a couple different other papers. And I'm going to cut those all to different sizes. So I'm going to pull out this dragonfly paper, this floral paper, which actually becomes the matte of my photo because I really liked how the brightness of it popped next to the dark green in my photo. And this photo is actually from a trip we took to um, the Chimney Bluffs, which are in New York State. And they're really cool, so if you're anywhere near the area, you should go check them out. Um, you can just easily Google a bunch of pictures from them, too, so you can get a feel of what they are. So I'm just going to cut a bunch of some different size strips for this little background thing here. And you'll see that first I um, cut a bunch of strips, but I won't end up using them all. So I'm just going to kind of create a pattern, different size strips, different lengths, different heights. And then I decide I'm going to put the glue down so I can um, estimate where they'll all be so they don't move. And as you can see, they don't come out the bottom all the time, so I'll fix that in a little bit once they're all down. So I just look around to figure out how many other colors I want. And again, all varying heights, because I like the look of that. And I started and ended with the same color, so it gave it more like fluidity in a way. So I'm going to chop all of these in half now so I can have a bottom layer as well. So that's another way to prolong your pieces, because... Well, it looks like it goes all the way down, but it actually does not go all the way across the back of your photo, which is convenient. And also saves time. So I have both strips on the side that are exactly the same color. And for extra support, I'm using some washi tape to glue them down. And I'm going to put the bottom pieces on. So I'm going to put them in the same exact pattern, um, starting left to right, so they line up properly. And then just sticking them in at various heights, so it looks like all the papers were different heights to begin with. 
And that's pretty much it for this part. I will have to again glue down everything with some more washi tape because I don't want anything coming loose since this did take a long time to put together. And now I'm going to move on to some embellishment clustering. So I have this sticker here, part of my pick five, and now I'm looking at this sticker sheet, which is actually from Bella Boulevard, not Jelly Bean Soup. So I'm messing around. I know I want my photo to go to the left, and the paper's warping at this point, so I'm getting really frustrated with that because I didn't gesso it at first because I didn't know how much water I'd be using, and I figured I'd be fine. But um, when you're using gelatos and a lot of water, you should gesso your paper a little bit. I'm going to cut off this little piece from a paper um, that I was using behind my photo. And it says explore and it has a piece of navy on it. And now I decide it's perfect time to use my stencil. So I find a spot here. I'm going to tape it down slightly just so I know it's straight. And then I'm going to use my Heidi Swap Gold modeling texture paste and stencil that through. So as I said, it was like an old sort of antique gold, but once that was almost dry, I decided to pull out my Heidi Swap Color Shine in the color gold, and this is much more of a bright gold. They do not match. I can tell you that right now. They definitely don't match, but um, that's okay. So I had sprinkles of this all over. I went a little crazy, but that's okay. And now I'm going to set that aside to dry because Heidi Swap Color Shine takes a little bit. But I am pulling out some items for um, my title for embellishing and I'm going to go from there. So I'm going through my embellishment box here. I pull out a bunch of wood veneer, which I don't end up using. I pull out some die cuts, which I don't end up using. <laughs> but I do end up using the thickers I pulled out, which you saw a few seconds ago. They're like a lime green color. I don't know why I picked them up because they're not my favorite color by any means, but I did get to use them. So that's good news. The main die cut pieces that I use, well actually I only use one really, is from the We Are Memory Keepers Flower Girl collection. And it's the butterfly that's green and lime green. So that's the main component of my die cuts here. But I will also be using some three-dimensional embellishments, which are probably my favorite types of embellishments. Um, mostly puffy stickers. I have this really cute set of animal puffy stickers that I just had to use. And then I think about using some freckled fawn chipboard, but I decide against it because I don't really want glitter on a nature page. So here I'm looking through my 3D embellishments, thinking about it. And then I come across the cute puffy stickers, and I pull them out. I'll end up using three of those, actually, so that's pretty good for me, puffy sticker-wise. And that's it for the 3D embellishments. So now that this is dry, or at least dry enough, I can start laying down these items. So I really like the butterfly, and I know I'm going to use that. And I really wanted to use this flower, too, so I could pull in the same colors as the butterfly, but I just couldn't find a spot for it. And now the puffy stickers come into play. I pull out this owl. I'll also pull out a little snail on top of a mushroom, and he'll go over there. And then I'm going to work on my title soon. So these puffy stickers are by EK Success, I believe. And you definitely need liquid glue on them. They popped off so easily on this layout. It was kind of annoying, but I just used my fine line bottle with Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive to make them work. Now I'm moving on to the lime green letters. And I'm trying to figure out a title, which by the title of this video, you already know the title. And it's just Nature Fun, which doesn't even sound like a grammatically correct sort of sentence, but I made it work anyway. And then I spelled nature wrong, but I fixed it fairly quickly so that's pretty good so I just laid those down and again isn't this just such a weird color I don't know who scrapbooks in this color but I don't think I'll be using it often I plan on painting most of these a different color so it makes it work for me I glued down my little butterfly and now I'm going back to the puppy stickers I wanted to use a bunch more but I didn't want it to be overkill cutesy because these are very cutesy puppy stickers so I did keep it down to a minimum and this layout is almost complete I hope you guys enjoyed my pick five and I'm going to go over everything that I used with you so you can see how I used it all. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe for more videos and I'll catch you guys next time.